Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of Nikon TV. My name is Mark Cruz here in our Nikon Canada headquarters. It's summertime, love is in the air, and it's also a wedding season, so we're right in the middle of it. And we have today a, a treat because we have a professional wedding photographer, Kelvin Young, joining us today. Welcome to the program, my friend. Thank you for having Actually, me. Actually, we've been friends for a while, yes. so I can legitimately, <laughs> legitimately call you that. Um, before we get into Kelvin, we're going to talk about your process as a wedding photographer, your mm -hmm. mindset, your gear as well. Um, but we also want to engage our Facebook Live audience right now. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, we want to invite you to participate. So during the segment, if you have any questions for Kelvin, this is an interactive process, type it in the comments below and uh, we're going to get to your Q&A right after we uh, talk to Kelvin for a bit. But before we do, we want to make sure that you guys are engaged and uh, we want to hear from you what your most anticipated S-line lens is. Comment below, give us a like, and um, if you comment, uh, you could win one of these uh, Nikon Z shirts. Z shirt, T shirt, Z shirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's uh, in, the, in the comments below. Thank you, sir. Um, what's your most anticipated S line lens, Kelvin? Uh, well, I've got the 2470 F4 S line lens right now uh, myself. And I think the most anticipated lens for me from the S line is probably the 85 1.8. 85 uh, 1.8, right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you guys haven't heard, there is an 85 1.8 announced for the S line. A roadmap is already on our website. And uh, I guess that uh, you, you've already leaked it. You're into the Z Club <laughs> already. You're a Z owner. That's right. All right, cool. So. Uh, Kelvin, I've known for a while, but, and we wanted to have him on the program today because not only are you artistic with your photography, you're a working photographer, you're not a weekend warrior, you're a professional NPS, professional photographer, mm -hmm. but you're also a techie guy. And I just wanted <laughs> to show this to the, the folks at home. He was waiting for me for lunch the other day and riding in his tech uh, kitted out uh, Tesla. And I just want to show you uh, here, he was actually playing video game in his car using not only the touch screen to play, what, what game is this? This like, is Beach Buggy uh, Tesla Edition. Beach Buggy 2. <laughs> Beach Buggy Tesla, Tesla 2. And you're using the steering wheel of your actual car while you're waiting for me to have lunch and playing this game. Like, That's right. And it actually uses the, your model Tesla with your color uh, uh, for your uh, vehicle. Oh, that's a, and I was, I was freaking out about this too. I was filming this with the Z6 with that 14 to 30, and uh, it was actually moving the, the wheels of your car. Yes, a little bit, yeah. This is incredible. I've never actually <laughs> been inside of a Tesla, so this was freaky when, when I saw that. And then while you were waiting, you were also, you, you can shop on your, on your Tesla. You were actually going through our website and <laughs> surfing the web. That's right, that's right. I was Running waiting uh, series. long for you because you were you know, busy in meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so we want to talk today about um, the anatomy of a wedding photographer is what we called it. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people out there that's watching, they may be aspiring wedding photographers and they want to know what it takes to make it in weddings. You also do events. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to kind of focus on weddings for this episode. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into photography, just like a, a quick synopsis on your background. Sure, I mean, I started in, uh, I guess, dabbling in photography around the uh, high school days. Uh, I was looking for a, a, a good camera um, for myself, and uh, I was introduced to uh, digital SLRs, and uh, at that time, I was comparing different brands, and I decided to go for the Nikon D70S. This was uh, over 10 years ago now. Um, yeah. And after that, I started playing around uh, with, with photography, started uh, job shadowing some professional photographers, and I found that I really liked it and uh, was you know, a little bit good at it. So I uh, decided to pursue photography as a career. And how long have you been doing uh, photography as a career? It will be close to 13 years now. 13 years, mm -hmm. and that's interesting because when I met Kelvin, uh, you were a student at Humber College, but you had actually started working prior to going for your formal education at Humber College 
College. We've actually visited Humber College uh, recently in one of these Nikon TV episodes. Yep. And uh, you finished their two-year program. But it was interesting because I think at the time you were probably our youngest NPS member. You were an NPS member. You were working professional before you even entered into college. And that's been great. I mean, how? Uh, why did you enroll in the NPS membership at that time? Yeah, I mean, I, actually, I was actually an NPS member even before I was at uh, Humber. So I was doing a lot of uh, assignments around Ontario. At that time, I was shooting a little bit more events, uh, live entertainment, uh, dance competitions, uh, that sort of uh, uh, shoots and I was looking um, I think I had some problems with equipment and I was looking to get the uh, equipment serviced very quickly I guess as a working pro you can't have you know uh, equipment uh, that needs servicing uh, to, for extended periods of time um, and that's when I looked into the NPS program which is great because you get the um, the priority service uh, as well as loaner cameras uh, and lenses uh, while your equipment is in, in, in for regular maintenance and service. Right on and uh, and you've been working for all that time now so let's get right into it um, mm -hmm. on on wedding day what is it like uh, creating those relationships with your customers and we're gonna bring up some pictures here that's just kind of gonna spur us and we have mm. some of your engagement photographs here so can mm. you kind of just walk us through what you what your approach is when you're uh, working with couples sure I mean if for a typical wedding uh, um, Planning uh, a lot of a lot of couples. The 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 first thing that they would go for is pick their venue, and the next thing they would they would do is is pick their photographer. Um, so that kind of relationship st starts when uh, you know well before the actual uh, wedding day itself. So and that's um, why we're looking at some engagement shoots here. What it looks like? Yes, that's right. So uh, the engagement shoots are are a you know vital part of the of the wedding photography process uh, simply because it's it's uh, a very good way for for me to get to know uh, my couples and for the couple to get to know me and for them to kind of get to know themselves in front of the camera. Uh, a lot of people, this may be their first time getting a professional photograph done in perhaps a very, very long time or uh, they, maybe they've never had professional photos done of themselves. Um, so this would be a good opportunity for them to, to understand what, what it's like to be in front of the camera, what it's like to be posing with one another. Um, that way on the wedding day itself, they'll be kind of pros already. They're, they won't be uh, you know, camera shy or they won't, know, they won't be come as a, a surprise to them. Right, so do you find a majority of your couples you're also doing engagement photos to them prior to their big day? Yes, so all of, all, all of our wedding collections actually include engagement sessions. Okay. Um, and it's very rare that a couple will not go for an engagement session. Um, you know, sometimes if they, some, some couples prefer to do something overseas or they've already done photos uh, overseas you know, during their, uh, their proposal, they might opt out of the, uh, the engagement session. But most of the couples do have the engagement session and that way we have good photos for their guest book, for uh, displaying pictures at the reception. Beautiful, so now let's just get on to the big day because I know even in the big day, you can parse it into different sections and there's the getting ready uh, type portion. I mean, I've shot a couple of weddings myself, so a lot of times we might even split up. One person has to cover the bride, one person has to cover the groom. Do you shoot with uh, another photographer, maybe a second shooter for your, for your shoots? Yes, yeah, so uh, what we normally do on a typical wedding day is I, as the lead photographer, will be at the uh, uh, bride's house. So that's right. usually where most of the action is happening. Uh, in the morning, uh, there's so a lot the bride's more, day after all. Yes, that's, there's a lot more going <laughs> on in on the bride side uh, of the getting ready, and then the second photographer uh, that's working with me that day will be on the groom side, getting them getting ready, and then depending on the actual wedding itself, uh, wh wherever we we meet is when we start working together. Now I noticed uh, in those photos that we just saw there, uh, you use the uh, window light a lot, a lot mm -hmm, of natural mm -hmm. light. Is that your approach typically when you're working with the? Uh, Brides getting ready. Do you like to use the natural light uh, a lot of the time? Yes, I'm. Uh, I, I like to use a lot of natural light, natural light, in, in my in my photography. Um, and I'm always looking to to play around with the light and shape of the light. Um, so uh, you know, it's oftentimes um, the couple uh, or whoever may be um, getting ready in a, in a in a in a dark area, and we, sometimes we would go in and we'd move them uh, to closer to the window or closer to an area that has a, a better lighting or a cleaner background, and that way we ha we. Can capture the best light uh, of, for, for that particular moment. Perfect. Uh, I guess getting on to the ceremony itself, and you have a breadth of different locations here. I mean, some of them are pretty exotic. So can mm -hmm. you just tell us about what we're looking at right here? Sure, this is a uh, ceremony, a uh, bride uh, walking down the aisle in uh, Punta Cana at, at a resort, this is a destination wedding. Um, so this is just a, um, a nice shot. You know, I w I'm usually at the, uh, the, the, uh, the front of the aisle, 
um, as, as the bridal party is walking in. And this was a, a, a very nice angle. I kind of quickly snuck out into the center of the aisle, captured the shot, and then stepped out of the way so that the bride could, uh, could enter the ceremony area. Right, okay. And then uh, the next shot, we're going to move now indoors. Mm -hmm. um, with, the, with the traditions, uh, the different various traditions that you're working with here, how important is it to know uh, the ceremony and what you can do, what you can't do, and the, the research you have to do prior to each of these ceremonies? Mm -hmm. I mean, for Canada, as a very multicultural uh, place. Like you definitely, like you mentioned, we, we encounter many different um, cultures, many different uh, traditions. So the ceremonies are a little bit different. And oftentimes, uh, you know, even every ceremony, never, there's never two, uh, you know, exactly the same ceremonies. So a lot of times when we're, when we're arriving at the ceremony, we would connect with the officiant, with the, uh, you know, the, the priest, whoever is officiating the wedding, uh, learn a little bit about their rules and uh, their preferences for, for photography um, for the uh, particular ceremony. Uh, we also talk to the, the bride beforehand and bride and groom beforehand and learn a little bit about, you know, uh, what types of um, uh, traditions we should be aware of, any, any special moments that we should be, uh, you know, captured that way. Uh, we, we are fully prepared for the ceremony itself. So speaking of that, especially during the, the wedding ceremony, uh, some religions or um, officiants, they won't allow sound. Is it, uh, now that you're using mirrorless, is it mm -hmm. uh, been handy to have that silent shutter feature? Um, I or actually, I haven't used a silent uh, shutter feature and it's because the, the Z6 and actually the D850 that I use, the shutter is actually relatively quiet. Okay. Um, <laughs> there is a quiet shutter mode, uh, right. which allows it to be uh, even more quiet and with the quiet, uh, quiet continuous, you're still able to capture multiple shots um, without, uh, like previously with the old uh, quiet mode. Um, but uh, I haven't had to, the, the need to use the, the full silent mode, even though it, it is available there. And in your, just for our viewers out there, what are your kind of top two lenses at that actual ceremony itself, where, where they're actually um, getting married? I mean, I, I, we're going to see some behind the scenes pictures of you later on mm -hmm. where, you're, uh, where you have a holster. What are the lenses that you want to make sure you have on you at that mm -hmm. time? Usually for a ceremony and for you know, a big part of the wedding day itself, I usually have my 2470 uh, 2.8 VR lens as well as the 70 to 200 uh, VR uh, 2.8 lens as well. Those are kind of my two go-to lenses. They're very, you know, they cover a very wide range uh, with a good 2.8 aperture. Right, and you're putting that on which body again? Uh, usually on a D850 or the Z6 with the uh, FDZ mount. Okay, so that's the two bodies that you're using right now. One Correct. is mirrorless, one is DSLR. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, a lot of our um, viewers are wondering what you're using right now. I mean, mm -hmm. you've gone through the breadth. I mean, we just talked about it while we were eating just a while ago. I mean. Uh, Kelvin's used everything from D7DS to D300, D7000. Mm -hmm. I'm not joking. He actually was D2, D3, D4, D5. So <laughs> what happened to the D1? <laughs> I was too young at that point. <laughs> okay. He was in grade six. He couldn't, he couldn't get the $20,000 D1 at the time. But um, uh, so you've been through the breadth of the different technologies. It's great because we were, you know, we were talking about the noise and the resolution and things like this. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at this point in time, you've actually settled on the 850 and the Z6 as right. your tandem of choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, now let's. Uh, there's that space in between the wedding and the actual reception itself, and during that time where you actually have some of the formal picture taking and things like this. What, what are some um, best practices or experiences that you can share with our viewers of making that period of time most successful to them? Because they usually have about 30 minutes, maybe an hour and 30 minutes, maybe two hours mm -hmm, mm -hmm. between the actual ceremony itself to the reception to bang out some shots. And these are usually the formal shots that they're going to be having in the album afterwards. Mm -hmm. is, is the pressure on at that point more so than the wedding? Or uh, how do you feel about those, those type of situations? Um, usually that's actually the, the fun part of the day. Okay. Usually we always say the hardest part uh, is, is kind of over at that point uh, after the ceremony. That's when you know, everything is, has to be uh, a lot of times very formal, very, very proper for the, the bride and groom and the bridal party. Um, and then it's, it's fun time at this point. Um, so usually for the uh, on-location portraits, um, you know, we're, we're always looking for the good lighting. Um, that's always uh, the first. Um, and then we work with the backgrounds that are available uh, based on the good lighting because you could find a very nice background um, at any given location. Uh, but if lighting is poor, then it makes for poor photographs. So you need to make sure that you're looking for a good light um, and, then, and then background to kind of support that. Right. And uh, we have a good example here. I believe uh, uh, 
this is probably just taken in downtown Toronto, right? Right by yes. the uh, Humber... Humber. This is Humber Bay Park. Humber Bay Park, correct. Okay, great. Yes. So, uh, I mean, you, you got to get the angles where you can get them, and it shows you here you're, you're on somebody's shoulders, right? Yes. This and is actually uh, a very memorable moment because I remember uh, being on these rocks at uh, Humber Bay Park on this beautiful day uh, probably about four or five years ago now. Um, and I, was, I always love using water uh, as a background uh, for my images. Um, and uh, at this particular spot, I, I saw that you know, we had a beautiful uh, sunny summer day, and I was looking uh, at, the, at the nice water that I could use as a background, but I wasn't tall enough, so I wanted to, to get, a li get in a little bit of height. I turned to my, uh, my second photographer, and I said, you know, let's, let's get me a little bit higher. And he right. kind of you know, looked right at me right, a, yeah. a little bit confused, and then the, 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 the best man there, <laughs> Uh, for the wedding, and she said, "You know what? I can do it." Uh, so he took his tie off, he took his uh, well, jacket that's the best off. Man. Okay. Yes, and he uh, he put me on his shoulders, and uh, off I went, um, and I captured uh, the shot that you were going about to see there. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, I I really like working with backlit myself, so I I love these type of shots mm -hmm. because it's so backlit did you have anything reflecting on the front or is that just the ambient uh, light around you that's just the ambient light uh, that's around me and i do you know very much enjoy uh, backlit shots as well it does create a very dramatic uh, looking right. photo with the rim light around uh, the uh, the subject yeah. um so yeah that's i i personally don't use too too much um, off camera flash or uh, any uh, lighting modifiers outdoors. I like to use and, and, and play around with the natural light. Play around the natural light. Okay, mm -hmm. great. I mean, it's great to see that you have such a great eye um, for those type of situations. I know that I do try to look for those situations too, but when there's high contrast, I'm putting out a reflector or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. you got to do that judiciously because you're going to blind your subjects, which I always invariably end up doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, here's just a, another, uh, I just want to bring this up, this picture right here, because some of our viewers at home might be thinking, oh, we talked about it, what you carry in your holster. So that, that's you on the aisle right here, the little behind the scenes shot. Yes. So you mentioned you carry a 70, uh, sorry, 24 to 70 on you um, at all times during the ceremony portion. Um, did you say you had a 70 to 200? Yes, as 70 well? to 200, and depending on the actual um, venue for the mm -hmm. for the ceremony as well. Sometimes I'll have my wide angle 1635 16 to 35 lens as well on me to get a very nice dramatic uh, wide angle shot of the venue. Okay, good. So all the uh, zoom lenses mm -hmm. gives you maximum versatility. You're That's not right. too worried about the primes. Now, speaking of uh, all the gear that Kelvin uses for these shoots. We actually had him bring in his bag, mm -hmm. and uh, right now he's just going to go up and show us what your bag is like. So we have your think tank here on the floor. Do you want to just yes. kind of walk us through what your everyday package looks like for a wedding shoot? Sure. Yeah. So, so this is my uh, think tank roller bag. This is the uh, the roller derby, and I actually really like this bag because it's got uh, four wheels. Uh, we're actually eight eight wheels, four sets of wheels, so it's very easy to uh, to glide along uh, in all different types of uh, terrain. Um, it's how, how much do you think that bag weighs? Uh, too much. Too much. <laughs> that's <laughs> why we have rollers. Wheels. Okay. Good. That's why we on, That's why we on wheels. Yes, that's right. So um, I pick this bag pretty much to uh, all the uh, the big shoots that I do, um, weddings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, in here, you'll see that there's kind of a, a, a compartment uh, for everything. Uh, I've got my. Um, D850 uh, camera body here uh, in, grip, in its yeah. own, uh, ex yeah, exactly, with its grip uh, in its own compartment here. I also love the size of the new Z body. This is the uh, Nikon Z6. Uh, it just fits right in here in this little um, corner here. And then in terms of lenses, I've got my uh, 2470 uh, 2.8 VR lens uh, right over here. I've got my uh, 70 to 200 uh, 2.8 uh, zoom lens right here. Um, as well as my 16 to 35 um, f4 wide angle lens, and then uh, in, for my primes, I've got. Uh, I actually this is one of my favorite lenses, the 85 1.8. It's a really great uh, portrait lens. Also good for um, any low light. Uh, there we go. Places. Finally, the primes. I was I was <laughs> waiting for that. Exactly. Any any of the low light <laughs> uh, venues that I may be in, um, and then the uh, 105 macro, which I uh, use for ring shots, detail shots, and sometimes occasionally. Um, as a uh, medium telephoto lens uh, to photograph um, you know, portraits or even you know, people speaking on the podium, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I've also got tucked in here the um, 2470 f4 uh, Z lens. Uh, sometimes I like to use that um, at the uh, weddings or, or events as well. And then over here I've got uh, two flashes. 
Uh, it's always good to have a backup of everything. Um, as what well, flashes are they? These are the uh, SP5000, uh, okay. and I love these cool. ones because they're more compact than the right. uh, than the uh, other Nikon, Nikon flashes. Yeah. Um, and they also have the built-in wireless uh, capability, which is really really nice. Um, and then finally, uh, I've got uh, the, um, oh, the, the SD9. SD9. Yes, beautiful. The, uh, the battery pack to give me a little bit more uh, recycling uh, speed. Uh, on the flashes and then just some other uh, accessories uh, throughout the bag. Oh, Beautiful. and before I forget, also the uh, FTZ adapter. So this allows me to use all the uh, lovely F-mount lens, lenses that I have uh, on the Nikon Z6 because it has the Z-mount, which is uh, different than the uh, DSLR F-mount. Beautiful. So why didn't you tell me, Kelvin, in that bag that we just saw there, uh, we saw both the Z6 and the D850. Mm -hmm. What lenses do you use on the Z6? Because uh, we saw the native 24 to 70 f4. Are mm -hmm. you adapting what, the other lenses on the Z6 as well? Or do you yes, leave so it more native for the 850? I do use the FTZ adapter quite a lot. Um, I, uh, the 2470 uh, Z lens is, is a great compact lens, very, very sharp, uh, great autofocus, uh, very Compact, so it's great for uh, moments when I'm, you know, on the go, uh, when there's a, uh, you know, a lot of light. Um, but uh, when as things get a little bit darker, I do prefer the f2.8 uh, lenses or the the prime lenses. That gives me a little bit more light, uh, a little bit more control uh, for the depth of field. Um, so at that point, um, I actually use all my lenses on the uh, the Z6, and with the built-in hmm. uh, vibration reduction on the Z6. Right. It also allows me to uh, um, have my 85, 85 uh, lens, right. which doesn't have built-in VR, to That's have true. VR. Um, and all my other lenses as well work uh, very, very well on the, on the Z6. Cool. And we were also talking about, because you mentioned the, uh, the wireless, so you're using that radio wireless now as That's well. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so have you found that to be some, sort of a game changer? I think you were mentioning before you were hiding the flashes behind certain concrete barriers and mm -hmm, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, in the past we used uh, you know, older Nikon bodies where when we're using um, CLS, uh, uh, wirelessly uh, to control flashes, um, we would have you know used the little pop-up flash or the on-camera um, controller uh, for the wireless flash. But uh, with the the new wireless controller that you guys introduced a couple of years ago, uh, it's you know very small little um, USB uh, accessory that right. you plug right into the side of the camera port, yeah. uh, or the uh, the front of the uh, the D850 the, the with the adapter, and it allows me to have you know. Um, all the controls I need for the for the wireless flash, just just as if it was uh, on top of the camera. Perfect. So I mean, that's your I guess that's your your day. I mean, how long would a wedding usually run in your in your case? You take it right till the reception? Yeah. So it, it really depends. I would say a typical wedding day is probably around a twelve hour day uh, 12 for hour us. Day. Uh, it can range anywhere from 10 to even 15, 16, 17 hours, depending on uh, the particular day, depending on the couple, depending on the, the, the religion. Uh, some, some religions, uh, especially Chinese weddings, usually tend to be a little bit longer. Indian weddings as well tend to be a little bit uh, longer, uh, just because there's more traditions, more things going on. Um, but it, it still depends on the couple themselves and, and how they plan their, their wedding day. How many gigabytes of memory card space do you need for a 16-hour wedding? Um, I actually don't carry too too much memory. I'm, I'm very selective in, in what I shoot, and um, and that way we we're always capturing the best instead of uh, in just capturing a whole bunch of, of, of photos that we're going about uh, to uh, in post production. And we also like to you know shoot all um, uh, uh, you know a good amount, uh, and that way it also helps us speed up the, the post processing uh, process itself. Um, but I'm usually uh, I would shoot uh, between actually the two photographers uh, on the wedding day. I would say nowadays with the, the high re resolution cameras of the 850 uh, and the, the Z6, um, it, we're probably around 100 gigs worth of files uh, on, on a wedding day, 100, 120 right. gigs. Are you, do you find, are you uh, working on the post-processing a lot now yourself these days? Or a lot of people are farming that uh, process out to save them time and to keep shooting. How do you mm -hmm. approach that? I personally like to do post processing myself, okay. um, and that way I have full control over what I deliver to the to the customer, um, and you know that way we also keep you know keep control of the quality and uh, everything kind of stays within my my style of photography and uh, everything that we deliver. Great. I mean, we've, you've taken us through a lot with your wedding work. Uh, you do things outside of the wedding season as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it is sort of seasonal that a wedding's happening all year round. Uh, but what do you what do you do to keep you busy outside of the weddings? So I do actually a wide range of photography outside of, of weddings. I do a lot of uh, corporate uh, events and conferences. I do um, some uh, food photography and some commercial projects. I also uh, work on some humanitarian projects as well, which is something uh, very very. Uh, 
uh, um, unique and very meaningful uh, for me. Um, so I guess we'll have a look at the. Yeah, some I think of my we have some uh, images here. Uh, you can just kind of walk us through what we're seeing here. We're going to sure. flip through some images. Sure. So we're just looking at some um, corporate events uh, and conference photography here. So we're just capturing a lot of. Um, uh, different um, uh, podium uh, stuff and uh, a lot of um, uh, different sessions uh, at, at, the, at various conferences. So a lot of a lot of these is to, to capture these photos for their for social media, for um, for different uh, internal newsletters, uh, for their website um, to to really kind of capture what happened at the events and, and the, uh, the the special guests that are at the events. Interesting. When I was talking to you about these images, I asked you what lens you used, and you surprised me because you told me the 200 to 400. Yes. And uh, sometimes the 180 to 400, and I figured, well, it's just a, a venue like this. Why wouldn't you just use a 70 to 200? But it seems mm -hmm. to me you're so far back in a lot of these cases, you're utilizing these long super telephoto lenses um, that you're utilizing from the NPS pool. So, um, yes. It's interesting because I, I hear people using a 200 to 400 for sports, wildlife. You actually use it for these conferences. <laughs> yes, that's right. Actually, 200 to 400 is one of my favorite lenses uh, in the um, uh, Nikon lineup, and I I do reach out to the NPS uh, a few times a year to uh, to ask to to borrow the the 200 to 400. And the 200 to 400 is a very very sharp lens. It's a, a very exceptional lens. Mm -hmm. It's also a very very expensive lens. Uh, so uh, with the NPS program, it's great because I can reach out to you guys whenever I have special assignments, uh, special shoots, where I require a, a specialty lens that I don't uh, own in my day-to-day um, -day, uh, bag. Um, and it's great that you guys can uh, loan that to us uh, free of charge uh, and for us to you know, use it uh, for the shoot and then just bring it back to you guys to, uh, to pass on to the next NPS member. Yeah, for those of you watching at home, if you haven't heard of our NPS program, check out Nikon.ca and at the tab, uh, there is at the top there is a section for NPS, which stands for Nikon Professional Services, which uh, Kelvin is a member of. Um, as you see, he just showed us his entire wedding photography kit. It's full of lenses, full of camera gear, but there are times when you're doing these special projects that kind of go outside of your niche or your uh, your area of specialty. Mm -hmm. And um, there is times where we're able to provide professionals like yourself that are part of our program um, those diverse um, array of lenses for special program, uh, special progress, uh, projects. So yes. check out our website to learn more about that. Now, yeah. um, speaking of special projects, mm -hmm. uh, tell me about this one here because it's pretty close to your heart. You've been uh, working with Orbis, I believe their name is? Yes, so Orbis International is a uh, nonprofit uh, organization and they are uh, working to eliminate avoidable blindness in, in developing countries. Uh, so uh, this is a project that I've worked on um, since 2008. Eight, I believe, um, so uh, over 10 years now. Um, and I've worked with them locally uh, for their fundraising events here in, uh, in Toronto and across Canada, as well as um, on their uh, programs overseas. Uh, so what you're seeing there is actually one of my latest uh, projects um, uh, with them. Uh, the, uh, the last shot there in front of the operating theater was uh, in uh, Cameroon, in Yaoundé, right. Cameroon in West Africa. Um, and uh, th there I was documenting some of the, uh, the, the um, uh, program that they were working on o uh, over there uh, to um, train locals and doctor local doctors and students there on uh, how to do um, different types of uh, eye um, operations. Um, I see you're using uh, some doing some video there in that uh, in the next shot. I think we're going to show here in a second. You yes. have the microphone up and your audio monitoring. Mm -hmm. uh, how much of your business are you doing with video now? Are you getting more into that? I'm doing a little bit more uh, video, and there's a lot of customers uh, that are starting to ask for for video. It's uh, it's the new kind of uh, medium, especially with the social media days. Um, a lot of people do like um, uh, video, um, so I'm I'm not doing too too many uh, videos usually uh, for projects that are overseas where. Uh, there is, um, you know, they only have uh, one person that the, the, the client is flying out. Uh, I would do both photography and video. And then with the new, um, you know, the current generation of Nikon cameras, the video is getting, you know, uh, very, very good uh, and in, in very small packages. So it's very easy as well to, to, to do um, uh, video uh, very quickly in between, you know, doing photography and video, switching back and forth. Cool. Very quickly, we're going to just show some of your uh, last bit of special projects here. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can just kind of walk us through some of the images that we're going to see here. Oh, it sure. looks like you're doing a humongous group picture there. <laughs> this is a uh, so behind the scenes shot uh, yep. of me at the, uh, the Orbis uh, plane pole for sight. So 
This is a fundraiser event where uh, teams uh, race to pull a, a 737 cargo plane. Oh, yeah, uh, they're pulling at, that plane. Okay, yes, at the uh, <laughs> Toronto Pearson. Um, so uh, this is just a group shot in front of the, uh, the aircraft of the, uh, the winning teams. And we have some shots here that you've taken in uh, some, uh, what, what kind of events are we going to see here in the, uh, what uh, that we're seeing out there? Yeah, so these are some various events that I've shot both locally and uh, overseas. This is um, uh, one of the uh, winter festival events uh, here in uh, Toronto. Um, How are people finding you for uh, this type of work? A lot of times, I mean, I've got a, uh, a website uh, with uh, different categories for my portfolio. Okay. Um, so there's, uh, there's there's various different categories. Uh, live entertainment and performance is obviously one of them. Um, and that's, uh, you know, sometimes when they're, they're, they're searching for a photographer online, they would often come, come across my website and, and we uh, discuss these projects. Similarly to a wedding, do they come to you with a shot list? I want to get a wide shot of the crowd. I want to get a shot of the performer, et cetera, et cetera, going into these type of things? Not necessarily that fully uh, detailed, but there will be special moments moments uh, for, for any type of uh, shoot, whether it's a corporate event, a conference, or a, uh, or a live entertainment event like this, where there are special moments, like here, the, the grand finale uh, at Young Dundas Square, uh, where they want to make sure that we capture that, uh, that photo of that uh, finale. Beautiful. You're always traveling. How many, how many countries have you been to? The last time I checked, I think it was 27. <laughs> yeah, but I believe there might, might have added one or two after that. I stopped, I stopped counting oh after a while. Almost one for every letter of the alphabet, and then some. <laughs> All right, beautiful. So you're, um, uh, all these concerts and things like this, what are some of the things that you, you've taken away from your wedding photography that you apply to these uh, concerts and things like this? Well, whether it's uh, you know, weddings or live entertainment, there's always a lot of action going on. There's a lot of things happening in front of the camera, you know, in front of your eyes. So it's always good to have your, your eye through the viewfinder, so you're actually you know viewing the day through your viewfinder uh, sure. as the photographer, and you're always looking for you know the the, the subject that you're you're trying to focus on. So um, you, oftentimes I'm on uh, um, continuous autofocus uh, with the uh, with the uh, focus point on the particular subject that I'm trying to capture, and we're we're kind of tracking them as they're doing various things in front of the camera and until the, the the right moment, and that's when you when you hit the shutter. And I see the right moment, you waiting for it right there. I love that shot. It shows you exactly how far you are from the action and. And uh, a lot of times, I guess you're relegated from to, to shoot from these positions, I guess. Yeah, so it depends on the actual event as well. Uh, the, these particular uh, shots you're looking at, this is a, um, a, uh, a singing competition, and uh, the, the, that's broadcast live on, uh, on TV. So oftentimes, the, the live TV cameras are on the floor uh, getting up close, and they're moving around with cranes and all that. Um, and we do have access to the, the front area, but oftentimes, it's, it's actually nicer to be a little bit further back. That way, we get to capture the full action on stage, as well as... Um, uh, uh, a nice uh, angle for the uh, closer up shots with the telephoto lens. You are a busy man, and I'll <laughs> tell you, um, the anatomy of a wedding photographer evolves into anatomy of an event photographer and uh, all the special projects that you're doing. So it's great to see you transition into all of those things. Um, we're going to be right back, folks, after a short break here. But when we come back, I want to hear from you guys some of your questions for Kelvin Young. Bring on the tech questions because this guy's a gearhead, he loves to talk gear and uh, we'll be back in about two minutes.
We are back, Nikon TV audience, and what we have here is uh, Kelvin Young blindfolded with mm -hmm. a Nikon NPS strap, a very limited edition NPS strap there. <laughs> um, for a game we're going to have before we get to your Q&A, uh, it's called Cruise Versus. So we are going to go head to head right now in a little segment where we're going to ask Kelvin to see how well he knows his Nikon gear. So in this box here, I have a Nikon product. He doesn't know what it is, all right? But he's gonna have approximately 30 seconds. So I'm gonna time this on my phone. You know what, I'm just gonna go by that clock over there. I won't need to 30 put it seconds. In <laughs> That's the confidence that I like. <laughs> now put out your hands, Kelvin, and I'm gonna put it in your hands right about now. You have 30 seconds to tell me what that is without looking, Ooh. just touch. This is a fish eye lens. Ooh, this is okay, probably now you the 16 be... mil f2.8. 16 mil f2.8. Or the 10.5 mil DX fish eye lens, but... Ooh. Hmm. 10 seconds. This is the 16 mil. 16 mil. 16 mil f2.8. seconds. All right. Fish eye lens. Final answer? Final answer. All right. You may, I'll hold this. You can take off your blindfold. Yes. Okay. And there we go. All right. Oh, 10.5. Oh, oh you close. were so <laughs> close. You were 50% of the way there. I liked your thought process. Yes. You were talking it out. Good for you. You won't beat me today. The most you can do is hope for a tie. <laughs> yes. Okay. Which is not going to happen because I'm going to get this one right. Um, All righty. We'll put this here. But uh, you had it one of two. So you, you know your stuff in terms of size. You just didn't know the nuance. And yes. It, it's okay. I mean... <laughs> it was close. Everyone, you can't be as good as Cruz. Sorry. <laughs> um, but all's fair, right? Because now I got to do the same thing. Uh, if right. I'm going to talk the talk, I got to walk the walk, right? That's right. Okay, so I'm going to blindfold myself, and Chris is going to hand you my challenge. Okay, so here awesome. we go. All is fair, and Ooh, um, you got to give me my full 30 seconds, okay? So okay. whenever you're ready, just put it in my hands. All right, here we go. One, two, right. three. One, two, three. Okay, here we go. Oh boy, oh boy, okay, so it's a zoom. This, is a, this is a tough one. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Mm. Ooh, he gave me the cap too. Mm, the diameter, the diameter. Okay, how many switches here? So it's a zoom. So where's the top? Okay, this is the lettering right about here. Oh, oh, it's an old neural. There's an old neural, and then there's an aperture. Is this a, oh, this is an aperture uh, ring right here. This is an aperture ring. So I know that's an aperture ring. I know that's a zoom, so if it's aperture with a zoom, does that mean there's a switch on the side? Is anybody timing this? Because uh, I think- If there's a switch on the side, oh, but this switch is locked. Okay, you tell me when, I, when I'm done. I think I, I know what this is. Okay, I'm gonna guess, because there's a lock Three, switch on here. Two, two one. one. It's the 24 to 85 f2.8 to f4 micro. Ooh, let me, let me actually have a look at this. Okay, hold on a second. Can I- can Yes, I, yes, yes, take it off. Look at that. <laughs> this was not rigged. Can I get a, can I get a tight of this? Holy moly. This, I, I was correct. And I, I walked through that and you saw it happen before your eyes. There was literally one camera. It never switched, right? So I, I, I legit beat you. You won. You won this one. <laughs> I, I, I'm such a gracious winner, aren't I? Okay. Um, no, Kelvin, it just gives me a, a lot of joy to beat you. That, because that you was know, a tough one. You I know your stuff. That. I mean, you're a really techie guy. And speaking of tech, we're going to get uh, into some of our questions right now sure. from the audience. And wow, I, I'm still on cloud nine from getting that because I defeated <laughs> Christian Bogner before <laughs> Michelle Valberg and uh, Scott Kenny. So I'm, I'm three, zero, and one because oh, I tied okay. Valberg. So... I don't feel <laughs> technically undefeated. I okay? don't feel as bad After anymore. After four. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, we have a question here from Joe. Um, mm -hmm. And his question is for you, my friend. Awesome. Why are some of your lenses marked with tape? Yes, so uh, you might have noticed uh, some of my uh, lenses are marked with blue gaffer tape. And that's just simply because I'm working with a lot of um, you know, second photographers. Um, Can I grab it? And here? a lot of times uh, we're, we're, we have very uh, similar lenses. So let's say here the 105, you can see here we've got the, uh, the blue um, gaffer tape, um, just so that we don't mix up our lenses because okay. I don't want them taking my lenses it's, home. It's as simple as that. Vice versa. Okay. Some of my cool. caps actually have it too. Right. No, no, I mean, uh, that's the important for us here at the office too mm -hmm. because the different samples we don't want to get mixed up with exactly. some of the 
sticky fingers with uh, my friend Mo over here. I'm just kidding, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good sport. Uh, uh, we have another Facebook question from uh, Carmine, and mm -hmm. his question is, uh, Okay, have you uh, needed to do, I guess, any projects that require wireless transmission to a notebook? And if so, what equipment did you go with? Okay, sorry, uh, have you had any projects that require wireless transmission to a notebook? So I guess like wireless tethering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I haven't had really any all. projects that require wireless tethering. Uh, usually uh, I'm close enough to the computer where I'm using a, a wired uh, tethered connection. Um, and that, uh, that's normally uh, sufficient for, for, for my needs. What jobs are those that you're actually tethering to a computer? So usually those are uh, any you know, studio type of work. So sometimes okay. I'm shooting um, student portraits, like graduation portraits at uh, um, some you know, different campuses uh, around the GTA. And that's when I'm, I'm tethered uh, into the computer and the, uh, the student would um, get their picture taken and then go and review them. Uh, have a little uh, sitting uh, with my assistant to go through the pictures and pick the ones that they like. Hmm. Uh, other times, I'm doing commercial projects where I'm shooting, you know, a product or a model where we uh, uh, would like to have the big screen uh, to review the images with the client and make sure that all the fine details are uh, exactly where we want them. Beautiful. So, uh, are you tethering uh, with your Z6 or D850? I actually tether with uh, with both. Okay. Yeah. So depending on the the project, uh, sometimes uh, I tether with the uh, the Z6, or sometimes you know if I like the the the, the uh, if I need the the higher resolution, then I'll go with the uh, the D850. But the the process is exactly the same, just different cables. You know, for our friend that asked that question, Carmine, I just want to mention to you that uh, with the Z6, uh, you can actually wirelessly tether to your MacBook or laptop, what have you, uh, with Without any special software, so um, you can essentially, without uh, an adapter or anything, right out of the box, the Z6 can do that. It can tether right to your laptop. Uh, you download a small installation configuration uh, utility from Nikon, and away you go. So no cords, no wires, no adapters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So mm -hmm. um, I've I've tried that myself. Now we have another question here uh, from Mike Young. His question is again about D850 versus Z6. Mm -hmm. Which one are you using for video? We saw that video uh, shot of you shooting some video. Which one do you use for video? Mm -hmm. So the the that project and those photos you saw, I was shot with the uh, the D850. Um, and actually, with the D850, I'm normally using uh, special um, accessories uh, w uh, to make the, uh, uh, the viewfinder uh, at the f with the uh, back of the screen, uh, oh, the, ba the back screen. So I actually haven't done any recent projects with the Z6 shooting video yet, but I'm actually very excited to shoot with the Z6 because it's a, a much smaller package and also because with the uh, mirrorless viewfinder, I'm seeing exactly what I'm shooting as well. So that way I eliminate having that additional accessory to, uh, to mount onto the, the back of the D850. Well, I mean, you've looked through the back of a Z6 electronic viewfinder. What do you mm -hmm. prefer, a Z6 electronic viewfinder or using a loop on the back of the screen of a D850? I definitely prefer the, uh, the, the Z6 viewfinder. It's, okay. it's, it's smaller, it's sharper. Um, also, sometimes you, know, you get little dust spots and, and whatnot uh, in, in between the loop uh, when you put mm -hmm. the loop on while you're, while you're out in the field. So definitely the, uh, the, the Z6 uh, electronic viewfinder. I got another question here from uh, Joseph Fernando, mm -hmm. um, who apparently uh, once uh, shot a wedding with you. Awesome. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yes, uh, how fast can you cull a wedding? How fast can I cull a wedding? Hmm. I actually like to do it in in, in batches. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, how I actually normally cull a wedding and how I organize the files is even though we are. Um, even, even though you know, myself and the second photographer are shooting at two different locations you know, in the morning, uh, so that way when we put the files into, uh, into the computer, they are kind of all mixed in between the different two locations. What I like to do first is, well, first of all, we've got to make sure our times are synced uh, correctly on the camera. That way we know that uh, things aren't you know, all over the place. Uh, but what I actually like to do is I actually like to batch all the groom getting ready together and put them at the very top. Um, and then we go into the bride getting ready afterwards and then when we actually meet is when the pictures start coming.
kind of uh, going side by side together uh, right. in the different moments. Uh, so that way it just keeps it organized so that when, when the viewer, uh, when the customer, when the client, when the couple is going through the pictures, they're not jumping between different locations and, um, and you know, it, it's, it's much harder to, to see the full picture and the full story that way when we're jumping between uh, different locations. Um, but going back to, to the question uh, of how long it takes to, uh, for, for me to call, I would say I, I like to spread it out <laughs> a little bit. I like to, um, uh, I, don't, I don't like to do it all in one go uh, because it, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit tiring. But you know, mm -hmm. sometimes two, three days uh, as I'm doing different things throughout the day, you know, maybe I'm answering emails or I'm, I'm out doing errands. Uh, but usually about two, three days uh, for me to And call. we're talking about yeah. how many pictures, approximately for a wedding of a 12 hour wedding, things um, like this. Typically, bride, room, I would say reception. anywhere between 1,800 to 4,000 pictures. Yeah, that's a lot of photos. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can imagine you spreading it over three days. One thing that I will mention just from my own experience, um, when I've shot a wedding recently with multiple cameras, what you just said really makes sense about getting the timings right between the different cameras so you know this shot happened at the exact same time or right after one another mm -hmm. because you're taking two shots from different angles and having it synchronized to my phone phone through the Bluetooth kept both cameras exactly in sync. Mm -hmm. So when I dump them into a folder and I'm r culling my own images from two different cameras, they're perfectly in line. So uh, mm -hmm. for those of you at home that have a Bluetooth functionality, it makes it great for that uh, mo multiple cameras working together and then just making sure your timelines work out correctly. Mm -hmm. Kelvin, this was fantastic having you on the program. Thank you so much for being a good sport and coming and uh, sharing with us all your great knowledge of um, your work. Um, thank you for showing us your behind the scenes, et cetera, et cetera. And thanks for being just an overall great dude. So for uh, those of you at home, thanks for again for participating. Um, if you haven't commented on what your most anticipated S-line lens is, comment down below. You might have a chance to win a Z t-shirt from Nikon Canada. Thanks guys for watching and we'll catch you on our next episode of Nikon TV.